Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about how to convert alcohols to alkenes or another way of saying how you're actually going to be reducing the alcohols into the alkenes uh, because you're going to be actually removing an oxygen so it's a, technically a reduction. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. Either you can do an oxy acid. So remember if you're using a binary acid it does a substitution reaction but if you do an oxy acid it will do an elimination reaction or you can also use TSCL with a strong base or if you want to do in a direct elimination, you can also do so with POCl3. So I'll show you all those three different ways of doing it. So let's start with this oxy acid. So this oxy acid, um, either you can use sulfuric acid or phosphoric acid, and it typically involves a lot of uh, heating there. So anytime you're trying to do these elimination reactions or al al alcohols to alkenes, you're going to have to heat the reactions to a uh, relatively higher temperature. Mostly, they will proceed with B1 reactions. They do, however, work best for the secondaries and the tertiary alcohols because primary alcohols, they could also make ether as the primary alcohols would be slow to react through an E1 mechanism. And then there is a competition going on in that particular case. So I'll talk about that in a minute as well. And since you're making the carbocation, because it's an E1 mechanism that's going to go through the formation of carbocation, there is a great possibility of carbocation rearrangement as well. So let's see how this is really going to work out. So at the end of the day, when I'm doing this elimination reaction, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this OH, and I'm going to be creating the double bond, and it typically goes with the so-called Zaitsev rule. All right, so you're going to be making the most substituted product, and it's going to be making the trans product. So those are typically favored unless there are restrictions in there. So let's talk about the mechanism. It's going to be fairly straightforward. So again, the OH is a bad leaving group, so we got to somehow make it a good leaving group. So we're going to be using the acid here to protonate that, obviously. So this is how your sulfuric acid is going to look like. So we're going to be going ahead and uh, uh, protonating this alcohol. And this is going to be coming down here. And remember, a lot of time these uh, acid-base reactions are actually going to be reversible. So you may see in the books they are drawn in two-headed arrows, but it's okay if you draw them with the one-headed arrow as well. But just make sure they are reversible because uh, uh, we are looking at just an acid base reaction here. So then I'm going to have two hydrogens attached here. So one hydrogen is obviously coming from the sulfuric acid, and the other hydrogen was already there to begin with. So this gets a positive charge. And then along the side, you also making this HSO4. 1 minus. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that down here because you will be needing that later on. And then in the next step, we can go ahead and get rid of this leaving group now because water is a good leaving group. So when you get rid of water, so I can go ahead and write down minus water there, you make this secondary carbocation. So as soon as you make the carbocation, make sure you kind of look around and see if you can make a more stable carbocation. But in this case, I can't really make any more st stable carbocation, so we just leave it right there. And then in the next step, since these are acid catalyzed reaction, I got to make sure I retrieve the acid at the end of the day. And it's going to be removing the proton from the adjacent carbon. So I'm going to be looking at two carbons, one on the left here, and uh, the one on the right here. So remember, I got to go with Zaitsev products. So if you have issues with Zaitsev and Hoffman, you want to go back and watch another videos uh, where we talk about E1 and E2 in, in the details. So this HSO4, one minus, and if I actually want to go ahead and draw this out just for, oops, just for a better picture there, it's the negative charge on that oxygen is the one that's grabbing this proton here. Oops. And this is going back in there to create the double bond. 
and this is going to be your final product in that case. So whether you use sulfuric acid or phosphoric acid, you're still going to be doing Zyxa product. Like I said, works best for the secondaries and tertiary alcohols. When it comes to primary alcohol, it's going to have a little bit of an issue there. So suppose I'm using a primary alcohol where uh, I have this ethanol and I use this reaction and it will make two products where I can have the ether or I can have, let me just copy this down. I can have the alkene that's gonna, well, it's just gonna be this because there's only two carbons. Um, so you can play with the conditions there. Typically, uh, you're going to be needing 130 degrees Celsius temperature uh, for this one to take place. And if you heat it up to more than 150 degrees Celsius, then you're going to be doing an elimination reaction in that case. Um, but uh, since there is an, always a competition, if you have a primary alcohol and if you're trying to convert it to an alkene, there are better ways of doing it. Now why that really works, because you can't really make a stable carbocation. So once this gets protonated, so I'm not really going to draw out um, the full compound here. I'm just going to write down H and then you know HSO4 here because I'm going to be using this proton right there to protonate that oxygen. And this comes down here and We end up making this protonated oxygen here with a positive charge. Now, this if this leaves, it's gonna actually gonna be making a very unstable carbocation. It's gonna be making a primary carbocation. So that's why it will favor the other type of reaction or the SN2 reaction where the other molecule of this guy will do the SN2 attack on this particular carbon there. So I can have this lone pair doing this backside attack. And then water is a good leaving group. It's going to leave. And in the process, you're going to be making, well, I wouldn't really make that quite, but eventually we'll make that because we've got to deprotonate that at the end. So we have this right there and then we can have this oxygen here so if I color coordinate this then this guy right there is the one that's gonna be blue in color here and remember there is still an hydrogen there a positive charge and then you can eventually deprotonate that using HSO4 one minus so that comes down here and this goes back in there so it actually makes an ether so that's the issue if you're using a primary alcohol and if you're trying to dehydrogenate that uh, dehydrate that using an acid you will have an issue that it will make an ether along the way. But if you heat it, heat it up enough at a high temperature, you will still end up getting an alkene. So if you actually have that, there is a better way of doing it. Like suppose, why not using, so suppose if I want to go ahead and make this, I can actually use, uh, in the first step, I can go ahead and use TSCL, make it a good leaving group. And in the next step, I can use a strong base, something like an LDA, so that it only does an elimination. So remember, in the first step, it can go ahead when you use TSCL with pyridine. So remember, the TSCL always couples with the pyridine. It would make a good leaving group there, an OTS. And then this can do an E2 from there by using a strong base, something like an LDA or even like an NAH will do the same thing there. Now, that's another way of doing the elimination. Uh, that's another way of converting the alcohols into an alkene. And it doesn't really only work for the primary alcohols. You can also have that work for the secondary alcohols as well. 
Uh, the other way you can actually do is by using POCL3. So suppose I am dealing with this alcohol here, and I want to go ahead and use POCL3. So don't get confused with PCL3 and POCL3. Remember the PCL3 makes alkyl halides and the POCL3 will make alkenes. So this is again going to be using with the pyridine. Typically you use excess of pyridine and I'll show you why you need an excess of pyridine with a mechanism there. So in the first step, we're going to be, so this is how it's going to look like. So we're going to be making it, it's again a good leaving group. So this attacks right there, the pi bond breaks, and we will so we draw that here, hydrogen there, still one lone pair, and then we're going to have oxygen with a negative charge. This is going to have a positive charge here. And then we can have the CLs right there. So this comes back and this gets knocked out. Let me just copy this down here. Okay, and then obviously you can use uh, the pyridine to depronate that oxygen. So this grabs this proton and this comes back here. So I, earlier I said you want to use excess pyridine and obviously there was a reason why you want to use excess pyridine. I'll just put that down here and make it a little bit smaller. So one, pair, one pyridine is used to depronate that and then in the second pyridine would be used to remove the proton from the carbon chain. So I can go ahead and use the second pair of the pyridine now, the second molecule of the pyridine. And it's remember, keep in mind, uh, it's actually going to be removing the proton from. So it's the beta proton that's going to be removed. So I'll take may, draw one of the protons on that carbon. So this removes right, uh, grabs that right there creates a double bond there and this gets knocked out here to end up making this alkene here. Now if you, this alkene was, um, you didn't really have any way of making a more substituted or less substituted, but if you have a possibility of making a more substituted or less substituted alkene, this still goes with Zaitsev rule. It's still going to make the more substituted product and the trans alkene in that particular case. So since you're using mul the pyridine multiple times, in one case deprotonating the oxygen, in the second case to remove the proton from the carbon, you will have to use excess pyridine in this case. And obviously your side products are going to be, um, this is going to be one of the side products here. And then you're going to have the protonated pyridine. Uh, being the other side product there. And suppose if I'm using a different type of alcohol, maybe in a secondary alcohol, and I can just use this right there, and I'm trying to do POCL3 with pyridine. And then uh, there is two possibilities I can make the alkene here. I'm not really going to draw the mechanism because it's going to be very, it's going to be the same mechanism as I have drawn on the top one. So if you know the top one, you can draw this one easily. So there's two possibilities. Either I can draw, make the double bond right here because you have uh, one carbon right there and you got the other carbon right there that could be um, where the pyridine can remove the proton. Or I can, uh, if I remove the right carbon proton, then I'm going to be making this product. Now, I said this is going to be doing the Zytsev, so this is still going to be the major product. And even in that, it's going to be making the trans product as your major product. So you may get a little bit of a, a cis in there, but that's going to be your minor product in that case.
So both of those are going to be the minor products. So this is how you're going to be converting these alcohols into alkenes. So you can use oxy acids, you can use TC, you can use tosyl chloride within a strong base, and then either you can you can also do in a direct conversion to alkenes using POCl3. The POCl3 technically works for all type of alcohols, whether it's a primary, secondary, or tertiaries. The oxy acids is best work for uh, secondaries and tertiary alcohols, and the TSCl is going to work best for the primaries and the secondary alcohols because tertiary alcohols with the TCL is going to be a little bit crowded in there and there is going to be stereochendrous. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.